person. <laughs> 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 Hey, Jim. Jim, you're, you're getting moved on farther down as time goes along. <laughs> it took him long enough to, to get up here. He was faithful. And now you're trying to slip him down the other end? Se seven years ago, I started out here. Well, then, did that mean you're promoted? I didn't get promoted. How are you? Happy New Year. How are you? Nice to see you. Y'all have a good Christmas and all? Yeah. Grandchildren are here. I know. That's good. Ah, yes. I don't have to switch today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Sometimes I come and they're real low and, you know. I got a, I got a six and eight, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean the back. Oh, the back, yeah. I like the back up, up as much as Mine, my little girl. My middle middle boy, huh? she just turned six, and she screams. You know anything? I mean, you know something's funny. Ah! Oh yeah. Well, I, I told him I've got. But you know, when I was when Some my kid that are up, I used a small paddle. I used uh, something like that. We hook them up to them. They're blue, just like that. Yeah. The <laughs> it's taller than <laughs> Well, probably. Well, that's what I keep telling my son. I said, it's <coughs> like uh, to discipline them. Oh, yes, we do. I said, what do you do? You tell them, okay, you all can't watch TV. Go in your bed. You got TVs in their bedroom. Oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't do no good. Time out. You know, I don't. It's just, it's different, and I know. The one thing they couldn't, uh, yeah. he had uh, ever had a 34, 36 waist. I just told Bob once, I said, when I moved to Pennsylvania, it's because I had a dog. So the jeans I had, I'm on my last leg, and I said, take care of Were you all from Pennsylvania? I haven't seen no. 34, 36. Oh. She married a Marine. I've been here 40 years. But I have a whole But she married a Marine and moved up there, and he got out and he didn't retire. And I had all kinds of shirts, you know, like that. He'll never be here. So, construction business. So, forward. I don't think they do those anymore, but I got to. I don't either, because they keep changing. Well, I want to, I drove. I know, I know wrestling, wrestling officials. Me and my dog. And I left white pinstripe shirt. The, the black and white stripe, yeah, Everett had some of those. Then they moved us to Grand. Oh, it's in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, I know where that's at. Uh, white pinstripe shirt. Yeah. 20 miles from New York. I got a whole bunch of, I got it, I got it, because it's taken up so one snowed. closet one. And I was going to come home on a Monday. Stairs, and, and I could use that for my extra clothes. There you go. So, uh, so uh, I got to get rid of that. You might get up with one of the booking agents. Yeah, uh, I thought maybe it would be Don Carr. Don, yeah. Give Don a call. I, I might give him a <laughs> <laughs> Everett belonged to New River. Yeah, he might know some young fisher. Nine o'clock, seven. Like yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't drive straight through. I'm too old for that. That's there's 13. a lot of softball guys going over to volleyball. Right. Everett did softball and volleyball. And he did softball, volleyball. The what? The plan. He didn't do. I I didn't see any literature or anything out there. They usually have a stand with something on it. Ask um, Pam over there. The one who got the guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I've been through Warrington quite a bit. Happy New Year. How can you do, sir? Hey! Oh, she's here. We can start. <laughs> We're all here, right? Uh, let's see. Is Chuck... Is, is, what happened to Chuck Quinn? Is he? Uh, I knew it, sir. Let's see. Would you like some more? Well, do what? Sure, thank you. Good to see you. How are you? How you doing? <coughs> Somebody else. Just, All right. I, I'm going to have to go by my church. Yeah, anyway. and then, I know it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's the only one I know. <laughs> it was written down somewhere. I said I was. <laughs> <laughs> we had our first meeting televised at Waterford. You could hear it. <laughs> and we have a lot of cross talking. And of course, we have. We eat it. We have some. And they had to take all the food out in the hallway so nobody would see that. This morning, well, I had a, I had a doctor appointment. We had good sandwiches. We had pizza or sandwiches like that. And that's, We've been doing that for about six, seven years, I guess. Yep. We, we've got some people that have other meetings, like at 7 o'clock, and they, 
and we yeah. start at five he said they wrestle and be, be there at five and then you know we don't they don't get a chance to eat they're or anything, they're, so. they're, they're in our conference but they decide that long i say our yeah. retire but they have some things where they wrestle at because uh, i never see stuff. anything in the paper about Let's see there's a, um mm -hmm. for some reason they don't call them as okay. much but yeah. whenever they come to dixon and they do their conference they have mm -hmm. something on the paper yeah Keys, um, how are you doing? I don't oh, just peachy. It's, 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 it's odd deal. because you know, no, Dave just covers Carteret County pretty well. Uh, I know. Yeah, I, I always just talk about it here. We both have. Yeah, but I don't see I'm good at Christmas as long as nobody comes to my Maybe they just figure it out. They are, you know, but they live in Goldsboro. He had a choice. He could come to my house or whatever. I have some friends from yeah, I went to bed like in, in 30 Christmas New Year's Eve. I said, there's some people there. I set my clock to wake up. You mean John Will? So I watched the ball soccer New York. Well, you set your clock. You don't stay up? No, I didn't. I just, I was tired and I just, you know, ever since my wife passed away, of course, I don't, oh, that's great. I don't okay. do as much. I don't anyhow. Mm -hmm. He's finally gotten as tall as what his, his last name is Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Okay. Sir Hildebrand. Yeah. I was going to down by here today and I didn't do it. I know. You know that. Pam. Exactly this was. And Pam. Yeah, I, I mean. Right. I can't quite place it on the map. That's their loss. The river yeah. looks funny. Yeah. Not the way it is in my family. See them all the time. I know. Well, I took everybody out of Hey, happy oh, New Year. I couldn't quite. Same to you. <laughs> Maybe when you put it on the big map. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, that's where yeah. directly. Take it, this is the river itself here. I so this is going, to, going to have a coastline. Then. So they, yeah. they join, yeah. but they paid their own. But what I really need to do is get lower it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know where all these things are. <laughs> 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 she, she was looking at Paris, and she was looking at London. What is this I've never been to Paris. I've never been to Paris. Across the river. I've never been to Paris. That's a part that's... Roman. Okay. I've been to the Vatican twice. I've been to Poland, Lithuania, uh, Prague, Budapest. Wow. Where's the yeah. land that's across the river? Downtown Jacksonville, yeah. Lock. Is this Germany? I've been here. I have been in six months.
would like to call to order the uh, Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board meeting for uh, January the 14th. We will um, stand and be led by the Pledge of Allegiance by Ms. Sandra Wyrick, followed by the invocation by Mr. Danny Williams. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Lord, thank you for the privilege that we can worship each day of our lives. Lord, we thank you for this city, Lord, and for the leaders. And Lord, we thank you that they still seek guidance, Lord, in doing the things that you would have us to do. We ask you to be with us in this meeting, that we not say anything or do anything that would not be pleasing to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, welcome to the meeting tonight, and glad to see everybody. We're starting off a, a brand new year, and uh, we're excited, and hopefully everybody had uh, good holidays uh, with uh, Christmas and the holidays and New Year's, and um, so I'm just glad to see everybody here on the board, and I'm glad to be back, and so we'll, uh, hopefully we've got some neat things ahead of us for uh, the city of Jacksonville, so we'll go ahead and proceed on. I need the approval for tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion to Mr. Spring, second by Ms. Wyrick. Those in favor, raise your hand, please. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, a review and approval of the minutes from last month's uh, regular meeting, uh, December the 10th, 2012. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? Make a motion we approve the minutes as presented. We have a motion by Ms. Wyrick. And a second by Ms. Moore. Those in favor, raise your right hand, please. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, City Council update. We have Councilman uh, Bob Warden with us tonight. Good to see you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we deferred that the first uh, plan unit development uh, until our February 5th meeting uh, for the really the same two concerns that y'all had. One was the street width, and the other, more important, was the second entrance. And uh, it's our understanding that they're working on formalizing an agreement to where they get a second entrance into that development directly to Western Boulevard. So that will make all of us feel a little better, I think, from a, from a safety <clears throat> standpoint. Uh, we, on our January 8th meeting, we did approve the following text amendments. Um, the, uh, the sign regulations, you recall, that was uh, the, the um, shopping center signs, um, how, we, how many square foot we allocated and so forth, we approved that. The bicycle and pedestrian facilities, and that was the sidewalk, um, uh, formalizing our sidewalks again. And then uh, review procedures for major subdivisions in the city of Jacksonville subdivision ordinance. So that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Great. Great. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. <coughs> Excuse me. I see there is no old business. Uh, we will move on to the new business. And this is a, a map amendment, a rezoning uh, request from uh, RM5. PDR Georgetown Landing, and I believe Miss Abigail has the. You heard, Mr. Chairman, before yes. We started, I would remind the planning board of the <coughs> procedures for public comment. Uh, all speakers shall be followed, shall follow this, the following guidelines. Uh, the chairman may <coughs> allow a period of public comment after staff's presentation once Abigail finishes up here. Uh, the speakers must be acknowledged by the chairman. Uh, speakers must come to the podium. We'd ask that you go to the left podium as you're facing the, the board and provide your name and address for the record. Um, the speakers will have a maximum of three minutes to speak unless the planning board entertains a successful majority vote to extend the time limit. And if you do that, you need to provide that for everybody. Uh, at no time can one speaker yield their time to another speaker. And that we ask that if there's more than one person that basically wants <coughs> to echo the sentiments already expressed, that they just come up and do so. Basically that I agree with the person that presented before me without necessarily going back over the same points. Uh, please be courteous in your presentation and your language. Uh, personal attacks will not be tolerated. And once the comment period is closed, no additional comments will be allowed. So I'd just like to remind the board and those in the audience, in case any of you have any desire to speak, and the chairman uh, opens the floor for that. Thanks, Gail. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Good evening, planning board. Um, we have before you the second uh, PUD, or planned development, and this one is Georgetown Landing. It's located in the Georgetown neighborhood at Elson Hatchell and Blue Claw Bay Ro Avenues. This is an aerial of the site. The site 
uh, currently has a future land use of medium density residential as donated as designated by the CAMA land use plan. The current zoning is RM5 and that's pretty much the whole surrounding area is all zoned RM5. The proposal is PDR which as we're sort of figuring out this uh, plan development tool it also comes with terms and conditions and a site master plan that you'll see indicated here. Um, in your staff report on page 9 and 10 you'll see there was a list of concerns and sort of corrections and things that we still needed more information from about this site and you'll also see the updated master plan that reflects what you have here on the side. The one in your packet was not as detailed as this one. Um, John L. Pierce on behalf of the owner, uh, Thomas Hunter, had worked over the weekend and updated this and sort of addressed a lot of the concerns that you'd see on page 9 and 10 in your staff report. This is the a picture of the property. Across the street, this is the vacant lot across Ellison Hatchell. And then this is looking west towards Ellison Hatchell. This is looking east. You'll see the blue claw is the sort of easement um, area at the end of this road. It's not a paved road currently. With all of these changes and all of the things being addressed, staff is changing the recommendation you see in your staff report from deferment to approval based on findings of fact A and D and that it advances the public interest and the approval will be conditioned upon the updated master plan and terms and conditions that you received tonight, not the ones listed in the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I have a question. With the, <coughs> with, with the current zoning RM5, what are, and, and this area is all RM5, correct, currently now? What is the, uh, according to the acreage, what's the number of units that could be put in this area uh, for RM5? It's actually, apartments are allowed as a special use, so it really would be up to, <coughs> the number is kind of, there is no number. It would basically be whatever came through and is that an acceptable density the way that the RM5 zoning district is written? It's just as apartments, there's no density specified. Our TCA zoning, uh, the maximum density is 16 units per acre outright and 25 with a special use permit. So they're saying with a maximum density of approximately 14 units per acre, it would basically be the standard TCA, a little bit less than the standard TCA. And the medium density residential versus in the CAMA is defined as up to 16 units per acre. So they're going 14. That's why they're in compliance with the land use designation. So I, I just have, it's my understanding that the intent is to build apartments with attached and detached garages. Is that? Yes, that, and then the area for a marina as well. Okay. Yeah, Gail, if you will, mark the marina area, mm -hmm. which is depicted here with the little square cross hatching, and then everything else would be utilized for the multifamily. Would be in houses be built there also, or just apartments? <coughs> the only uses that they've identified is multifamily, marina, and a restaurant with the marina. So the area in blue, that, that Gail just highlighted, that's the area identified on the plan is that's the area that would contain the marina and the restaurant area. And the remaining portion would be where the multifamily units would be constructed. Do they have a specific restaurant in mind to go there? None that we're aware of. And they're proposing 463 units in there. I believe that's mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wasn't this before us or have
haven't we dealt with a marina and it's it seems like a few years ago it wasn't on this side it was on the other it was side on the river on the, on other, the side, yeah. other side this is as far as i know new yeah, this there was is in the georgetown development. the canal across the river if you go back to the aerial uh the piece that's undeveloped on the right hand side of the screen it, now go back to the vicinity map um if you can circle the area where osprey point is there was a community docking facility major now that's laguna bay across the river there with the little canal up to the north right there uh right beside riverwalk landing that it was but it was not a marina they weren't doing um it was basically a slip was going to be for each individual unit right. Mm -hmm. right and there was no marina as we define it mm -hmm. and there was concern about pollution and Circle the area where um, what Dr. Shilsky has his development. That was the Laguna Bay where you had it first. Yes. Right there. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, and how, show me traffic wise how traffic would move out of this. Uh, I'm thinking 463 houses. I'm going like that's 463 cars minimum. So that's a lot of traffic going somewhere or coming from somewhere. Correct. You'd have um, two forms on 17 at basically Broadhurst and Georgetown. There is a bottleneck right within this area here because that's only one way. That's the only street going into Georgetown at that particular location. And then once you come down, there's there's a couple of different ways that you can turn off to get to the project site. Once you, once you get down so far, there's only yes. one way down to it. Just one street going into this area that they want to develop. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. There comes a point where you're, you're just, everything's going down one street. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Are they going to have security or is it going to be a private um, <clears throat> entrance type? Uh, the John Pierce wants to give more information about that. There are gates identified on the master plan. Here and here. wetlands and now yeah, that's they're in that area with this map I'm I guess I'm a little confused but I know there's one area we're looking at rezoning tell me what area we're actually dealing with here because I see all these different property owners out here all these lots on the outside so if you can just yeah here I'll erase say everything we're the, dealing with here little thicker, uh, line weight there too. if you don't mind I was looking at this in detail and I see different owners, different owners. You know, are we just talking about the interior of this circle? Yeah, that's good. It just helps me to more visualize it. Okay, so it's everything on the inside, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I see all these other property owners out here on, on the outside, okay. So it's everything on the end, okay, okay. Does blue uh, Claw Bay Road exists. There is an easement for it in this. It is right here. There. It's sort of just a dirt. It's a dirt path road now, more or less. So it's not paved. No, it's not. No, it's a right away. One of the things is your maps also is a little bit misleading because it actually goes through the middle of the property. This is it's larger than what your maps look. But basically, it's just a dirt road. Yeah, this Correct. is the. Okay. Or sort of Sandy Road or whatever. Okay. Easement, dirt road path. It's not currently improved. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there any along Blue Clay Bay Avenue, which is a dirt road, is there any houses there? No. The nearest house. Let's see. Okay. 
so nothing. Yeah, there's blue call here. There's homes here, and then to the north here, it's cut off on the other side of the property in this right. area. Okay. Yeah, this is, you'll see in the aerial here, this is the blue, right. and it's not improved currently. Has the TIA been done? No, and that's listed as one of the conditions is that a TIA would be conducted before. And this is also, it will still go through the site plan process. This is just sort of a general bubble master plan of, you know, stormwater will be treated here. The general street layout will be here. This will be apartments. It's not the specific buildings and, you know, things like the fire code and the distance between buildings and where the wetland protection and all of that will work through as it goes through the site planning process and actually for the development. This is just to rezone the property and because it's not a traditional district like our R7 or a B1, it also comes with the terms and conditions and that master plan. And the reason they went this route as opposed to just developing it as the RM5 and possibly going to special use to do the apartments is the marina. The marina would not be, it's a more of a commercial <coughs> use that would not be permitted in the townhome, the TCA district. So to do sort of both of those without subdividing the parcel out and rezoning one portion B1 and one portion TCA or going through the special use permit process, they sort of did this general <coughs> overview plan of the area that incorporates both the commercial marina and the residential apartment use. It also is very specific. I mean, they're telling you exactly what they want to do. They want to do multifamily, a marina, and a restaurant. That's it. Versus B1, which would be a laundry list of things, even if they then changed that to conditional use and whittled some of the uses down, they're telling you basically we want these three uses within this designated area, and that's it, with the other terms and conditions listed. One other thing, remember, we had two PUDs come in back to back. Based on what we've heard, it is our intention as we move forward is a traffic impact analysis would be done before. So the next person that comes in starts talking to us about a PUD, our comment's going to be, you go get a TIA. That's first and foremost. Remember before, the zoning ordinance has always said we could require it with a rezoning, but we always put the TIA off until the development plans came forward. Because of the PUD and the concerns that have been raised, we're going to start requiring that we... <coughs> We're going to start enforcing that part of the code instead of deferring until later. We're going to have it done up front as we move forward. And the reason for that with the general like B1 zoning, it's a laundry list of uses with the PUD, it's specific. So you can't really do a TIA if you have a laundry list of uses because each use has a different chip generation and different traffic requirements. So if you don't know specifically what you're doing the TIA for, it's not very valuable. But with a PUD, you pretty much know what's going to be there. So the you can determine what you need to do the TIA for. Question. On that blue Claw Bay Avenue, mm -hmm. there are the people that own those lots along there, do they have some kind of a covenant for taking care of that road? And if they do, how would this affect that? Not that I'm aware of. Um, all the properties within 100 feet, which would be those properties, have been uh, notified of, as a courtesy letter of this rezoning and we're invited to both this meeting and then the city council meeting as well. But I'm not aware of any covenants <coughs> for that area. More than likely that was a right of way that was platted on a map a long time ago and it was just never constructed, but it's still a platted right of way. I would like to make a motion. I have a question. Would the streets um, leading into this be upgraded with curbs and gutters and, and everything or would it be just still like the roads are now they would leave them as they are they would do their improvements on their development track now if the TIA identifies that turn lanes or something is needed mm -hmm. then you know that would come into play but as far as adding curbing and gutting gutter along the street I haven't heard of that being a requirement of a TIA you do hear turn lanes and deceleration lanes and so who's yeah. going to take care of these roads? Who takes care of the roads currently? City? City. All right. So all of a sudden we increase the amount of traffic and these roads start falling apart because maybe they weren't designed for that traffic loads. And okay. So the city's going to have to pay to, to fix them up. And they're we not very wide either. 
No, we, it's very we narrow. maintain the streets. Yes. <laughs> does this sit in the uh, does this sit in the uh, flight over light path? Yes, yeah. there's a portion that's in the FPOD. I'm sorry. There's a portion that's in the flight path overlay. <coughs> so, let me, may I? Okay, yes. So, we're going to make this massive construction down here. We're going to use these existing roads for construction entrance, heavy trucks, equipment, whatever they're going to build. So, whatever damage is done to the existing roads that are back there, that's just tough luck, right? That's how they are. I mean, the streets have already been accepted by the city. They're ours. People use them every day, and as they wear and tear, eventually the city has to go in and maintain them. And, I, and the reason I say that is I, it's currently zoned RM5, which means they probably could have done whatever they were going to do anyway. But I got a feeling that originally all that was zoned RM5 because of the existing uses that were there and the restrictions that anything else would have put on those the uses years ago. Like mobile homes, couldn't that show up on RM5? Yes, sir. <laughs> that may be why originally all this area was zoned RM5 was because there were current residents around there in mobile homes and they didn't want those people to lose the right to that, have their home on the land. That's a possibility. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's our raised zone for multifamily residential anyway, so you know, whether duplexes or like that, but we're just trying to increase the density use of the land. Right. Single family, duplex, triplex, <laughs> quadruplexes are all allowed as long as you meet the minimum lot size requirements. Apartments require a special use permit with no density maximum, so it would be based on the plan that, that was brought before you. So basically, they could eliminate the marina altogether, come in with a special use permit for nothing but multifamily here, <coughs> and the Planning Board and City Council would still consider it whether this rezoning goes through or not. Um, they would then, if they wanted to do the marina, have to go through an individual rezoning for just the marina area to some sort of a commercial type district with all the uses unless they went conditional and then whittled it down. That's basically what they've done here. They've basically given you a conditional use rezoning in a roundabout way that says these three uses in these particular locations and that's what we're bound by. I think the question with that in mind, you know, is it an appropriate land use for this PUD to have a marina, a restaurant, and the density that they are seeking of, you know, approximately 14. So say a maximum of 14.99 units per acre. Is that appropriate? So like someone mentioned about the traffic and the building and the construction and the trucks and everything else that's going in there. And, um, the developer does not have to bear any of this cost because if they're I'm thinking of the increase in traffic it, it, you your point is is spot on but that happens I, I hate to say this but I mean that's how it is anywhere I mean Williamsburg Plantation Carolina Forest Boulevard those streets have already been taken over by the city as they continue to develop the dump trucks are going to go up and down that roadway mm -hmm. I mean, that's no different here than anywhere else. I'm not saying that it's not a concern, but I mean, that's no different anywhere. Although in some cases we have had the flexibility to designate that you must have a construction entrance. And in some cases we've been privileged enough not to have to accept the roads into the city until after the construction or the majority of the construction is done. I think I remember McDaniel Drive was like that. They wanted it to go into the city early on in the game, but we saw there was a lot more construction to be done down there. And we said, wait, we'll just wait till all the construction's over or most of it. And then we'll take it into the city. This doesn't give us, we don't have much flexibility here because we can't tell them to, you know, float their construction stuff in. Don't get me out of I mean, you're still going to have the traffic no matter what for buildings. So whether it stayed at RM5 or got rezoned, I mean, if someone buys this land, they want to just keep it RM5 and go and build it out. They're, they're still going to bring the construction trucks in anyway. So, okay. All right. Um, Ms. Moore. I would like to make a motion that uh, we approve the rezoning request from RM5 to PDR subject to the terms and conditions that staff recommends. All right. So we have a motion by Ms. <clears throat> Moore. 
to accept this uh, resign request from RM5 to PDR with the conditions as set forth by the uh, planning department. <clears throat> and finding of facts uh, A through D. Do I have a uh, second? I'll second. A second by Mr. Williams. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If I may. Yes, sir. Is there any desire to hear from anybody that may be here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, is there anyone from the would like to say anything? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to come up here? Uh, right here, ma'am. <clears throat> we just need to identify your name and address. And next one, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, if I if I look, my name is Delroy Sprague. I'm at 209 Conover Street, which is at the end of Conover Street. Um, if I look at the layout correctly, the private gate is going to be right here at the end. And I guess with the amount of people that you're going to put in here, and like you said, I understand the roads are narrow. And we already have traffic problems coming through there constantly. And I understand that if somebody else comes through and develop, we're going to still have the same problem. But, I mean, where do we, where do the residents, as far as going in and out of this area, with all this extra traffic, and there's only one way in and one way out, if, I think if I'm not mistaken, during flood zones, flood times, hurricanes, We've been evacuated. We've been asked to leave. <coughs> where, where is the extra outlet in case there's something that happens along that water line? Brian? It's a good question. I mean, the roads that lead back to the site are not proposed to be changing. It's not under the developer's control. Those are all existing right-of-ways. This developer is simply seeking to rezone this portion of the property to develop it. They would still use the same road system that all the residents that are already there currently use. I'm not saying that that, that neck down that we pointed out earlier, I mean, that's, it is a neck down where it bottles down to a bottleneck to one, one road within that area. <clears throat> but that's how it currently is set up. But I mean, it's a legitimate concern I mean, you're talking about adding 400 units. Increased traffic, I think, is uh, a given. I mean, I understand after you get past the Board of Education, you can either go straight to 17 or you can turn down Broadhurst. But still, it's only one way after you get past that point. I was just, you know, concerned. Great. That's a good question. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Cynthia Watson, uh, 203 Conover Street. Uh, we had gone to the city for, in 2004 for the infrastructure of Georgetown. And they disregarded what we were saying because the streets have never been Nothing has been done to the streets since we annexed into the city. And now you're looking at bringing in 400 units, people, cars, and the infrastructure doesn't even work. So I think you should look at the infrastructure of Georgetown because of the water and sewer there and the curves and, I mean, they have rainwater, rainwater runoff, and we're paying for it, and we don't even have any storm drains. So I want to find out. Let's, let's fix the infrastructure before you can bring 400 <coughs> houses in. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. My name is Wood Marshall, and, um, and I live on that road, uh, Blue Claw Bay Road. And I'm just like they said, 
uh, all this traffic that you're dumping in now, if you come up with these units, how are you, like you say, how, what are you going to do about the outlets? And, and when somebody says something about the water, I have to live there. When we have a storm, if you don't get out, you'll drown. The river come up to the top of the hill. If we had a Hurricane 5, if you if you in Georgetown, you good as lost. And the roads that I said that uh, she was saying something out there, right away, those are not right away. Those are people yard. Those are not even a, um, what y'all call it, um, easement. Those are not easements. That run road is my backyard. That's my granddad. My granddad, we own both places, right next to where you're talking about. My dad, granddaddy gave me that to get to my yard when we split the land. That's not a road. That's not even the easement. And the easement, what you're talking about, was going to the, to the right. Those are not easements. Those are people's driveways <coughs> from when they was there years ago. And the roads in Georgetown wouldn't stand the construction work that you're talking about coming in there with. And furthermore, marinas and all this stuff, <clears throat> that shouldn't go. That's a neighborhood. Why would you want to mess up a neighborhood to make a resort? And, and like you say, you're going to use the same roads? Wouldn't work. No drainage, as the sister just got through saying. When it rained, um, Mr. Warren, his yard floods. And just like she said, since we've been in Georgetown, the city ain't showed us nothing about high taxes, high water bill, high trash bill. Everything for us the city said they're going to do, never been done. Only road being paved in Georgetown is out there by the Board of Education. And the road coming in Georgetown, coming around the first curve and the second curve, no road needs to be redone. But the city say, we ain't got the money to do this. We ain't got the money to do that. But anytime the city get ready to do something, they got money. But uh, no, I would, I would hate to even see this kind of construction go up. I'd rather see if anything's going to be done, it would be nice to have homes, not marinas and, and uh, restaurants and all this stuff. This is a neighborhood. You know, if you're going to do that, carry it out in the wilderness somewhere like they always do. Don't come break up a peaceful neighborhood and traffic. Good Lord. We have enough problem with traffic now. And then you're going to dump all this in there with one road. And that one road is a Y. No one says it's an F. Because it comes out of Georgetown, down Dudley, or out of Georgetown to 17 straight past the Board of Education. That's the only inlet and outlet you got. And you're talking about 400 and some uh, apartments with people that have five and six cars. You ain't asking them much trouble. It's just too much. And that ain't going to get it. It will not work. We have enough trouble now to bring more headache in. It's a peaceful neighborhood, and I like to see it a peaceful neighborhood. Then bringing all this construction and, and whatever else you got going in. No, I would will, I will hate to see it go. And I, I, I would like for y'all to reconsider. That's what I had to say about this. Thank you very much, sir. One thing I'd like to say on a related topic, a lot of the issues expressed, which I'm glad we've had so many people come out and express their concern. A lot of the issues are about the neighborhood as a whole, and I'm not sure um, if everyone is aware, we actually are doing a neighborhood planning program, and Georgetown is the next area. So we want, we want to be looking at this area and seeing how we can address those concerns and how we can do it. And we'll probably be um, towards the summer trying to get people involved and have public meetings and exactly what you've expressed today, find out what the neighborhood needs traffic, stormwater, any flooding and a second access and sort of focus on this area like we did with the Country Club and Sandy Run plan last year, maybe it was the year before, but sort of identify the issues with this neighborhood as a whole instead of just the specific parcel here and address a lot of those concerns. That's one of part of the city's neighborhood planning process that we're going to be working towards in the upcoming summer, spring months. So what you're saying that was on kind of like the city's agenda before this item actually came before yes. you yes yeah we're at, we've actually been doing some work on the um gateway on the 17 and 258 corridor sort of the commercial component of the neighborhood plan and then as we 
draw to a conclusion with that. We want to just focus on the Georgetown neighborhood as a whole and address a lot of those concerns such as access and traffic and the maintenance and condition of the roads and really get the people who live there involved and find out what they need and what we can do to address those concerns. Whether we okay this or not, you can still build apartments on that land just like it is, right? I mean, you can still have those with a special use permit. With that, you know, you're still going to have um, whether we decide to make it better here or later, and um, you can still be able to build on there. It doesn't make any difference what, whether we vote for it or against it. Or not. <coughs> you're still going to have the uh, ability to go and build those apartment complexes, right? With the exception of the marina. With the exception the of the room. marina. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's correct. With a special use permit, they could come forward with the same apartment proposal. So you can still have the same amount of traffic, same amount of problems. If we do nothing tonight, it's still the same, That's except correct. for the marina. But go back to the other map, you know, where we're, I guess uh, that's good. Or, you know, um, next one. That's good. The, 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 the parcel, as I'm looking at, to the left of Blue Clay Bay Drive. That's all part of this. That's what I was saying. The maps are a little bit misleading. Okay, that's all part of this big, yes. big thing. I mean, my, my, you know, I understand what Mr. Williams said. I mean, my, my major concern is, um, it's just getting people in and out of there. That's it's a it's a problem. I mean, I've been, I haven't driven all the way back that far into it, but what I have driven back to, um, great day. I mean, it's it's you know, it's kind of torturous driving back through there, and you get you know two way traffic, and actually you throw you know. So the construction art trucks is what it is. Okay, so no matter what we do, uh, you know, someone's going to develop that piece of land no matter what. Um, but the bottom line comes down in my eyes is somewhere along the way the streets have got to be improved. I mean, either widen improve something to put up with, with that so whether it's rm5 whether it's the you know the new rezoning you know pdr it, it doesn't make any difference it's just be able to get people in and out of there you know just like one gentleman said when we have a we have a flood or we have hurricanes or something going on you've got to get people in and out i mean just just downtown jacksonville that's a problem you know going down there um so um I, hopefully the city is going to address those issues because those people out there at least deserve that because it, it isn't it's an, uh, been overlooked for so long. I, I think it will force the city <coughs> to have to do so too. Um, yeah. Okay. My, so the problem go, there is inside city limits. The city is going to have to be forced to do something about it. Okay. My All my right. biggest. Go ahead. Mr. My Green. my biggest problem is is two or three things or a couple of things. One is transportation in this area I'd, I'd hate to give somebody directions on how to get here because right. you got to make too many rights left right left and to what what that's saying to me is it's just not an easy place to get into and get out of and you'll have people driving around these neighborhoods trying to find this place uh, who knows what by allowing the marina come to come here we've made this area attractive more attractive for people to buy or to rent or to come here so the the marina is actually going to make things a little worse and that i got a feeling without the marina this area would not develop quite as quickly as it is as it would now um i just i just don't see this as i, I don't know what to tell them to do with this but i just don't see this as a good use for this land i mean i, I think we're asking for trouble so okay. all right somebody else all right here uh, further discussion Mr. Pierce. John Pierce, 405 Johnson Boulevard. <clears throat> I'd just like to make a couple of comments. That the zoning may show some numbers, but in reality, I would think the maximum number of apartments would probably be somewhere around the, in the 300s, maybe 330. We tried to do this and set parameters to be as a maximum amount, that, that main, that's what's going to be in reality. And also at the same time, I had talked with the 
the Dr. Thomas Hunter and in, and something that was just sent early on to the to the planning and, and if we don't have a restaurant, I, I told him I thought it'd be a good idea and a great idea for the community, him being a doctor and he does practice in emergency rooms that, that if we don't have a restaurant to have something like an urgent care center there that, that would aid the community and it would be a I think it would be a great asset for the area to have an urgent care center right within the area. And if we if we put a restaurant then there won't be an urgent care center because it wouldn't be run, but I would think that would aid and I understand Mr. Spring what your concern is, but it is what it is and it's the only way it can be developed and if it were developed as it is with a large number of mobile homes, I don't know that or even apartments with not the amenities that's proposed here, I don't know in the end of the day that it would really be good for the area. I think this would be a great asset for the area and I think at the end of the day it would be a great asset for the Georgetown community. And I think Dr. Hunter's certainly wanting the folks he's dealing with, he's looking with out of Texas to develop some first class projects and that's what his desire is. He's held it a long time, he's had a chance to sell it several times over for the wrong use in his mind and he really wants to bring something positive to the Georgetown area. And I'd like to try to answer any questions if y'all have any that I could try to answer as best I could. And oh, by the way, I just want to correct one thing, Mr. Spring, McDaniel Drive, I built it prior to any construction that the city took that street because I built it myself. And one of the conditions was they want to build all the schools and all the houses and after being built the road, I said, well, that's fine and well, I built it to the standards. So if you want to go with all the construction traffic, you need to take it because I would have had to fix just as and there again, it is what it is. Yeah. So I had to fix one road. <coughs> like, I've had to fix several of them. But I'm well aware, and, and I don't know what the, the TIA may call for some widening in some places. It may call some improvements with, where, you know, the one thing you do have when you got roadway shoulders, and it may, it may make us widen the road for that to help ease that, what we call kink or bend. So I haven't seen, but. I'm sure, and it does address safety concerns as well. Thank you all. Thank you, John. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, we're going to take a vote on this. Uh, we have a motion by Ms. Moore and a second by Mr. Williams to approve the rezoning request from RM5 to PDR with the uh, conditions that are set forth by the planning uh, department and finding facts A through D. Did I say that all right? I believe I did. Okay, those in favor of this motion, please raise your right hand. Raise your right hand up so I can see you, please. Okay, we have three in favor. Those opposed? And we have four opposed. This motion does not pass. <clears throat> yes, yes, sir. All right, so, <clears throat> the motion is pre presented, has not passed, then we need another motion to have to act um, upon this. You ready? Yes. Like a motion, I like can make a motion, we deny the rezoning request based upon the findings of fact C being in the uh, negative. The impact of the adjacent property owners and the surrounding community is reasonable and the benefits of the rezoning outweigh any potential inconvenience or harm to the community. I'll second that. All right, so we have a motion by uh, Mr. Spring and a second by Ms. Weirich to deny the rezoning request uh, based upon finding fact C that it does not uh, benefit uh, in their favor. All right. Okay. Any discussion on that? Mr. Yes. Keys. Um, it looks like to me all we all we're doing is asking for a rezoning of this piece of land as opposed to the actual building we know the in we know the intent <coughs> by the rezoning but uh, they could choose not to do anything they could choose to do part of it all of it or none of it and uh, the, the uh, 
proposal here is to rezone the piece of piece of property. And that's why I'm in favor of it because in favor of the original motion because they want to rezone the piece of property. And that's that's what you're asking if I understand you correctly. Now, this is a little bit more than just a standard rezoning. I mean, they're they're saying we want to rezone this for multifamily, a marina, and a restaurant. I understand. At the density that they've established as a maximum, and, and the board's got to make a decision uh, on the rezoning, but also because it is a little bit more specific than the general rezoning, is that appropriate for this location? Okay. okay. All right. So we have a motion to deny the rezoning request. Um, those in favor of that motion, please raise your right hand. One, two, three. We have four in favor. Those opposed. And three opposed. So that um, motion to deny this request has passed. I think we should first do that. Okay. Check and get that area and then after they get that. Okay, there is no uh, other new business. We'll move on to um, uh, reports. Um, one report would be that this will be forwarded to City Council for their February 5th, I believe it is, City Council meeting. I'm not sure about that date, but it will be a 7 p.m. meeting here uh, the first Tuesday after the first Monday. So I believe it's the 5th. So in case anybody on is watching on TV or for the board members and for the residents that are here, uh, that's when it will be forwarded to the city council for consideration uh, and a public hearing. Right. Do you all understand that? The ones that are here? Okay. It does have an opportunity still. It will go before city council and it still has, based upon their recommendations, it, it still has a chance to move forward. So it'll, we're moving on up. They have, you know, so they have, there's still another chance of this. So. Okay, as long as you all understand that, and plus also viewers, and thank you, for Ryan, for bringing that to everybody's attention. Okay, Mr. Goodson. We have none. Okay. Uh, is there any other items for from the planning board itself? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. Second. And a second by Ms. Keys. Right. Thank you very much. You all have a nice you evening. Stay here? <laughs> you want to stay? <laughs> yeah, I thought about that.